when I did some similar stuff or some worse stuff and it just never went public. All, all of us have some things that we, we, we thank God that he didn't allow to come out into the public and he blessed us and he covered us in the midst of it all. Is, is there anybody in here who, who can go ahead and get happy? The God, the God you serve has compassion on you. He feels what you feel. He understands what you understand. He goes through what you go through. He, he never lets you walk through it by yourself. We, 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 we don't have a high priest who, who hasn't been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but he was at all points tempted. Just as we was. That, that's why the Bible says over and over again that the Lord was moved with compassion. And I need some folk in here who has the title of farmer in front of your name. We all got it. We all got the title of farmer in front of our name. I, I need some folk who has compassion so over some other folk who trying to get the title of farmer in front of their name. We, 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 we can't act like just because we got over it. That somebody doesn't need the help that we, we can provide to get them past it themselves. All of us have been a form of something. Somebody was a form of homework. Somebody was a form of gambler. Somebody was a former abuser. Somebody was a former drug. And all of us have some things that we was a former something. But all thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God that he looked me on all of my faults. And he supplied me with all of my needs. Listen, we can't act like, it, like we came off of some assistance. We can't act like we didn't make some mistakes in the past. But I'm thankful that what this father shows is a great picture of what our heavenly father does. Because your Bible says he ran to his son. Oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all should count. That was your shot. Came out of that. He ran to his son. Now, now, let me, oh, I get it. I, let me, I don't know why you didn't get it because I didn't teach it to you. Let me tell you. Jewish men, according to their customs and their tradition, they, they, they didn't run in public. Jewish men didn't run in public. It was beneath their dignity. The rules of the Jewish culture and tradition says you don't run. You're a grown man. You, you, you are dignified in public. But, uh, this day, this day breaks the rules. He breaks the rules to bless his son. I said, this father right here broke the rules to bless his son. Okay, I, I know why you're not getting happy like you should, cause 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 you forgot. You 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 probably forgot, but 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 but, but you got some things that. You 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 should have been convicted for. You you got some things that should have took you out. But all the Lord, He broke the rules. As a matter of fact, there are some people right now who knows good and well you didn't qualify for that loan. But God broke the rules, and now uh, you found out. There was a stamp on it that said qualified. Yeah, there are some people who know good and well that uh, the E on your gas tank don't stand for everlasting. But uh, somehow or another, you found yourself making it to your destination. That's because God broke the rules. Somebody in here ought to help me get happy. Because the Lord broke some rules to bless us. Is there anybody in the house today who's still excited that the Lord 
is breaking roots. As a matter of fact, there are some people who had some health scares, and the doctor has said, I've done all that I can do. And you were supposed to be dead and gone a long time ago. But the Lord stepped in, and he broke the rules of the doctors and said, I'm going to touch you with my head and hand. And he made a way for you. I'm so glad that I have a God who saw me, who came to me and threw his arms around me. And he kept me in the midst of it all. But as I close, can I point out one more thing? The last thing is when he said that his father kissed him. His father kissed him. Now y'all remember, I told you he had to get a job. And his job was slopping and feeding the pigs. Now this ain't no clean job. He didn't come home looking all fresh and crisp. He came home.
us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for this, another chance, another opportunity, God, to be in this place of worship. Father, we pray right now, first of all, that you would forgive us for all of our unforgiven sins. God, we pray that you would clean us up as you see fit, God, that you would create within us a clean heart, renew within us the right spirit, God, that our hearts and our minds can surely be focused on you. God, we invite your anointing, your power, your spirit to fall fresh in this place on each and every one of us. God, we want to have a worship experience from on high. God, we want you to pour out the word, song, scripture, a prayer, God, something that we can apply it to our everyday living, that our walk with you can be made the better. Now, God, whatever traps, snares, distractions that the devil may be trying to set down, we pray that you would remove them right now in the name of Jesus, that we can have a worship experience from on high. Now, have thine own way like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, I don't know about you, but I am excited that the Lord has kept us the way he has all week long. Through danger seen and unseen, he's allowed his protection, his angels, his hand to be upon us even though it may not have worked out, everything may not have worked out the way you want it to, God is still in control. So listen, we're going to keep climbing, keep going higher, um, quieting out. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but when the choir sings, something happens in this place. Things begin to shift and the atmosphere starts to change and they usher in the spirit. So listen, choir... Y'all keep on singing, so come on, bless us, and take us over high. Oh,
Pastor Wright, Greater L. Bethel Church family and friends, I am Corey, and this is your weekly GEB News. Bible Study Wednesday. Join us for Bible Study each Wednesday on Facebook Live. Bible Study starts promptly at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss these inspiring lessons to help you get through the rest of your week. Mission Ministry. Ladies, Mission Ministry will be meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We are inviting all ladies of the church out to come see what Mission Ministry is all about. We learn more about God, fellowship with one another, and so much more. We want to see all the ladies present and grow in God together. Amen. Men's Ministry and Deacons. There will be a change in meeting time due to pastor schedule. Brotherhood will meet on Wednesday, June 28th at 6 p.m. here at the church. The first hour will be Brotherhood covering chapter four of the book, and the second hour will consist of deacons meeting, so please plan accordingly. Youth. The Galilee Griggs Memorial District will be having their annual youth conference July 9th to July 11th. It will kick off that Sunday with the musical, followed by classes for each age group on Monday and Tuesday. Parents, if your child is planning to attend, please register them via the church website. We want to have an accurate count so that we can plan for transportation for our youth if needed. Thank you in advance, youth leaders. Family and Friends Sunday. Today is Family and Friends Day. All, and all of our visitors, on behalf of Pastor, First Lady, and Greater El Bethel Church family, we want to extend a warm welcome to you. We are excited that you are here worshiping with us. We want you to know that this is a place that loves to have church, and we welcome you to have a shouting, praising, and a hallelujah good time. Again, thank you for choosing to worship with the GEB Church family. Don't look now, but someone will be turning a year older. That's right, our First Lady. On July 1st, our First Lady will be celebrating another year older. We thank God for her day by day and year by year. We love her and she doesn't even look a day over, over 25. Happy birthday, good First Lady. Prayer. Please keep all of our known, sick, and shut in, those need in need of prayer in our church family in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Amen. 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 Listen, uh, we are uh, these course have been our announcements. We thank God uh, for all of the things that are taking place here at the Great Al Buffalo Church. And again, parents, parents, uh, we are planning on attending. We will be in attendance at the Galilee Griggs uh, Youth Conference. I know that it's been a minute since there's been an outing such as this, but we want to start it off with a bang. Uh, parents, just know that uh, your children, when they go to these things, they, they, they get a, on their level, a greater sense of knowing who God is. Amen. And we're taught to train up a child in the way that they should go. And these are tools that we can use to train up a child. Uh, but we encourage you to uh, make plans and preparations to have your children uh, to attend this Congress. Not only that, but let me throw this in there. There's also classes for parents as well. Amen. Uh, deacons, laymen, uh, ushers. Uh, there, there are other classes that will be taking place. So uh, if you want to dive even further into the Word of God, get to know more about what church is, this is your opportunity. Amen. Amen. Um, there was one more I was supposed to all right, it'll come to me. Amen. Amen. All right, I can't think of it right now, but I get to. Amen. Um, listen, quiet. My Lord. My Lord. Listen, it is. Oh, this family and friends. 
um, to all of our guests, as already mentioned, we count it all joy, honor, and a privilege to have you all here fellowshipping with us on today, and we thank God for your presence. Uh, but let me go ahead and do this. Let me tell you that this church is a long-standing great church. Amen. 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 If you talk to any member, they'll tell you that hey, we are doing things here on this corner of Cliff and 9th Street. This church has been deemed an historic, historical location. Amen. Back at our front. Amen. So that lets you know that there's some longevity within this place. But not only that, uh, we're not only we're not the only people that see what happens here and knows what's going on in this community. There's also others who have seen, who've acknowledged the fact of what we do here at Greater El Bethel. As a matter of fact, I'm grateful, I'm thankful that we have some guests that are here on this morning. Uh, and, and, and Dr. Miles is here. She reached out to me uh, after seeing that we celebrated 137 years of existence. And when she reached out to me, what she has for us is something amazing. So what I want to do now at this time, I want to allow her the opportunity to come and, 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 and give the information that she wants to give. Amen. However she wants to do it, we want to allow her to do that at this time. And Greater El Bethel, you in for a treat. Let me... Captured about 
the Black African American communities. And so she, along with others, did research on this area, the 10th Street Historic District. And thus, what came out of that are 10 wind panels that are at the DART station at 8th and Corinth. And so as I was following the story about Greater El Bethel Missionary Baptist Church's 137th anniversary, I went through the storage and I found the picture that she did of this church. And I said, it would be just a wonderful gift to give the church this painting. Johnny Singer Parker passed away two years ago. And so as an ancestor, I know she's smiling knowing that her portrait, her painting of this church is going to be captured and on display in this sanctuary, in this building, in this edifice. And unlike my church, which is no longer, I'm glad that we're going to be able to have it on this corner. I drove through here the other day. I even went to the dark station and I was to find some of those paintings, those wind panels, are cracking and being destroyed. But here you'll have the original painting. So, so I am most grateful that we're able to present this to you today, Pastor. And First Lady, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to ask uh, Okay, Damon Levine is my, uh, is the webmaster. I put together the website for Johnny Singram Parker's site. So I've referenced that in some places and so you'll want to look at that. But if you will help me bring this
Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to have this displayed out front uh, so it can be seen as you walk in. Now listen, when she reached out uh, and told me about this painting, uh, I immediately knew which painting she was talking about. Uh, having been a police officer for DART at some time, when she told me which one it was, I remembered when it was placed there, when they was building the stations from there and Marrell, and I looked at it walking by one day and said, hey, that's my church. And I was actually proud of the fact that there was some history there. Now, granted, it is the train station, so y'all know uh, stuff don't always last that long. But to have the original, listen, the Greater El Belco Church family thanks you so much for thinking of us and blessing us with this uh, great memory that has been made of our church in this year. Now, that was a little... That house ain't even over there no more. Lord have mercy, so you know. Amen. We, we are thankful unto God. That lets you know that, again, the pillar that we as a great help of the church have had down throughout the years in this area. And yes, we are still going strong. God is still doing amazing and great things. And there is so much more to come for us right here at the historic Greater El Buffalo Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, our choir's gonna come and they're gonna take us even higher than after that. We will hear what thus says the Lord.
do it forever. Uh, somebody ought to give thanks. Somebody in this time and then experience some of that mercy. Has the mercy fell on you lately? If it has, you ought to old hill thanks for the mercy.
that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, if you got the King James Version, the gates of hell will not overcome it. Amen. Now, God, I really thank you for this and what you've done thus far in blessing us in this worship experience. But now, God, as we get ready to receive a word from you, Father, I pray that you would allow your word to go forth. That it may touch our hearts, our minds, our souls. That our walk with you can be made the better. And God, that someone may see you through us. And ask, what must I do to be saved? Now God, give preaching power. Father, sit me down that you may stand. Keep me on that I may be able to do your will. Speak through me. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't mind allowing me to use just for a thought or a subject, let's get it started. Let's get it started. Over in Zechariah, uh, the fourth chapter, about the tenth verse, God is speaking to his people. And he asks this question. It says, who dares despise the day of small things? One translation says, the day of small beginnings. Literally to suggest that there are some days, some weeks, some times in our lives where we have to start in meager, small, petite, little ways. There are some seasons, some days, some moments in our lives where things do not look as fulsome as we would like for them to look. Uh, there are some times where we start with lean moments, where, where things are not as robust as we would like them to be. But God says, don't you dare despise the small beginnings that you have in your life. Literally to suggest that if you know who God is and you know what God is able to do, you know that God can take small things which, which we begin and blow it up so that we can have the victory and we are able to give him glory that is due unto his name because of it. As a matter of fact, there is someone in here who can look back over your life at the beginning of this message already. You can testify that you had some days in your life that were lean. You've been through some days in your life where you didn't know if you were going to make it. There's somebody who can testify. There were some seasons where you wondered if I was really going to be able to push through and make it. And if I was going to be able to overcome the challenges in my life. But somebody in the church today can also testify that little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. That, that, that the Lord can take your meager and make much out of it. He can take your little and make it abundance. And, and church family, listen, I, I celebrate that on this Sunday because somebody right now is thinking about it in their hearts and in their minds that God has been good. Despite the ways things have started out. And listen, just because your startup didn't look as productive as you wanted it to be, if you trust in God, he will prove to you that he, if you just take your hands off of it, he can take you to where you want to go and place you where he wants you to be. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Maybe, maybe somebody heard it, that, 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 that 21st century philosopher. Y'all know that 21st century philosopher named uh, Drake? Yeah, yeah. He, he puts it like this. Started from the bottom. 
some, some of y'all don't, y'all know that philosophy. Huh? Okay, now, 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 now I'm talking to some people. There are some things and some people in the room, as a matter of fact, who, that y'all, some of y'all was able to call it out and say finish. It started from the bottom now. Here. But there are some people in the room who scratching their head who have absolutely no idea what we just said and what you just talked about. Never heard of Drake in their lives. But but they if they don't know Drake, maybe they know Dave. Because David, the psalmist, puts it like this. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Somebody can testify either through Drake testifying or through David. Your testimony is God has made a way for me despite the way things may have started out. He keeps on blesses me. He keeps on hooking me up. And I'm looking at somebody in here today who can thank God that although the trend is changing, watch this, in regards to generational wealth in our African American community, the trend is changing, is changing upward, uh, an upward mobility in our community. And as we look back over history, we have to testify that people who lived back then had very little. And they had very little, but they were able to trust in God so much. They trusted him so much that God kept on providing for them and kept on making a way for them. Okay, okay. I know, I know, I know. You're you, you making good for yourself right now. You're well off. Right now, you got a good salary right now. You 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 looking back over those other generations and you probably tell yourself, I don't know how they made it back then. But let me tell you, there are some people in the room right now who knows that if they had to just lean and depend on Jesus, they understood the whole phrase if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side because God took their little that they was dealing with and he made it much that they was able to, so, okay, okay, let me let, let, let me be a little more practical because somebody not catching me, somebody, listen, listen, I need somebody to go back in the day. You, you, you can testify, you, everybody in here now, you, most of the people in here now, you got a flat screen TV in your house. You just up on your wall, you got the TV to where you can log into the websites and all of that stuff. You got a smart TV. You, you got one of those. But there's some people in the room right now who can remember back in the day that all you had was a black and white television. I can't remember that. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> but there are some people who can who can testify that you had only a black and white television in your house. You didn't have no colored TV back in the room, in every room back. As a matter of fact, you didn't even have a remote control. Some of you, like me, was the remote control. And when your mom and them wanted to change the channel, they hollered out way in the back room, hey, come in. Change the TV. You, you was all in the back, minding your business, and they sitting in the chair, and you got to get up and go. Oh, the sin. You, you get out of my sermon. Okay. There, there are some people who can testify about an antenna. Now, now there are some people in the room who don't even know what an antenna is. There, there, there were some things that used to be on the back of a television. They pointed up like this, little metal fans. And they would make the TV clear, not like cable and satellite. But when those broke off, you didn't go buy another TV. You went and got a cup. See, some of y'all have been there before. You, you, you went and got a clothes hanger. You ain't getting that thing. You stuck that hanger in there. Started from the bottom. Now I'm... Come on, somebody testify that it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Listen, I, I'm talking to some people in the room who remember, who remember when your mama and your granny wouldn't let you sit on the living room furniture. You know, you, you, you couldn't sit on the living room furniture. As a matter of fact, it was covered with Y'all live in those houses too. It was covered in plastic. It was listen. Don't you take yourself in there and try to 
sit on that stuff. But now everybody's sitting anywhere in the house. You got your feet up on the furniture. And you wish, listen, some of y'all every now and again, you put your feet on your own furniture. You look over your shoulder trying to make sure ain't no, because you was raised differently. And you understand, listen, if my grandmama, great-grandmama can see me now, she hit me upside the head for even sitting in this room. But God keeps on providing. God keeps on making a way. God keeps on doing great things. Listen, matter of fact, thank God for this picture. Matter of fact, there, there, there's some people in the room right now who, who didn't have, back in the day, they didn't have church buildings that was as nice as those other ones and, and high technology. And they, they had churches like our historic church. There's been some upgrades and stuff here, but 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 but, but there used to be some days where churches had wooden floors, and they didn't have no drums. They didn't have the, the drums was their feet and their hands, and they clapped and they stomped their feet. They had a good time, and guess what? They had good church. They had good. Why? Because they understood that if they had a relationship with God, they realized that if they was able to make it day by day, going through all of the stuff that they had to go through, God, they knew God was keeping them. So when they got to the church house, it was something different. It wasn't no show. It wasn't no production. It was a way that we coming in on one accord, uplifting the name. Jesus. And some of us, all of us, some of us got some wonderful stuff. Some of us got some things in our house that we, we ought to be happy about. We ought to praise the Lord about it. And, and then every now and again, we'll get too caught up and we'll forget to say thank you. Forget that we come a long way. So, so I raise for our consideration today because we do not despise the day of small beginnings, of small things. We recognize that when we have a God who is on our side, that our starter, our beginning is necessary. It is necessary. As a matter of fact, your startup and your beginning is not necessary your designation or your destination of which you will go. And that's exactly what we're looking at here in Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 19. Read all of them when you have a chance. It is seeking to suggest to us from its perspective that, uh, that, that, that we see how the Lord takes the startup of what is to become the church. And he starts it in a little place called Caesarea Philippi. In the region of Caesarea Philippi, listen, that, 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 that is known for uh, uh, deities being all around. It is a pantheon of cultic and religious deities. In the Caesarea Philippi, they have Baal or Baal uh, as their god of worship. They, 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 there, are, there are those who even worship Caesar. And that's how they got the name, Caesarea and Philip, out of which they, out of which they get Philippi. And these folks who are dwelling in Caesarea Philippi understand this place of being in a pantheon of cultic worship. Listen, all of the rocks, all of the stones that are around the city are idols to these gods with the Luji of who are all dead and gone. And that's what's happening in Caesarea Philippi. Are you with me? Caesarea Philippi, uh, that there, there are deities that are celebrated even though they are dead. Yeah. And into this context, Jesus takes his 12 disciples and he begins to make inquiry of them. He, he says, he talks and takes them into Caesarea Philippi and listen to his question. He asks his disciples, who are the people? around here saying that I am. Who, who do they say that I, that the Son of Man am? And, and listen, listen, listen to the responses that, 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 that are given. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah. 
other Samuel, Elijah, and, and, or, or one of the prophets. Now, now I got to give it to them. What they said, they, 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 the people that they're mentioning, they're not necessarily bad answers. they just wrong answers. Let, let, let's be clear. Those men that they're naming are good men. They, they, they have a long history in regard to helping people. They have a relationship with God. But you must remember, listen, come on, come on. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. You, you remember Elijah, he sat on top of all of the prophets in their history. Jeremiah, y'all remember him? He was that weeping prophet who engaged with the people to have a responsibility toward their God. Jeremiah, who, who was the one? He was the one who told the people, listen, I know the plans that, that, that I have for you. That God, listen, God has a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. And, and then they said, one of the prophets. One of the prophets. Could have been fairly a good answer, but the only problem was Jesus was so much more than a prophet. He, he, he was so much more than the one who can stand and foretell the truth of God. He, he, and here's the other challenge. Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, and those other prophets were all Dead. Yeah, all, right, all, right. all of them. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. And so, so Jesus asked another question. He says, but who do you say that I am? Who, who do you say that? Now, 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 now here, this is where we get to where the rubber meets the road. It, it, it's one thing to know what everybody else has to say about the Lord. But it's a whole other thing. To make up in your mind what you need to say and have in your heart and say about the Lord. He says, who do you say that I am? And this is when the story starts to get good, y'all. Because Peter, Peter, y'all know Peter, right? The, 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 the impetuous one, the one who's always got something to say, even if it's wrong. Peter. Peter, you, you, you know Peter, you know what he, He's the one who put his foot in his mouth at any point in time. But here in Matthew chapter 16, he gives a strong and powerful answer. He says, oh no, you, you're not just John the Baptist or Jeremiah or Elijah. You're not just one of the prophets. Listen, he says, you are the Christ, the Messiah. The son, listen, listen to this, listen, of the living God. So somebody call, some of y'all call it. They, 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 they are in a pantheon of dead deities. They, they, they're, they're, they're in a pantheon that surrounds them with all these religious and cultic type of deities. They were idol gods. But when Peter identifies Jesus, he says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. God. Our church family, this is, this is when it gets good because if we're going to celebrate, remember we're still in our series, we on worship right now, there's some things that ought to cause us to worship and praise to God, but, but, but if we're, we're going to celebrate, we ought to celebrate our startups, we ought to celebrate getting started because you have to recognize that it begins with a personal proclamation. Personal proclamation. Let the church say personal. 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 You got to know some stuff for yourself. You got to know some stuff. And I'm grateful that on this Sunday morning that I'm surrounded by some sisters and brothers who don't need to take other folk words. You don't need to take other folk opinion about who your Christ is. You don't need to hear what other folk have to say about him because somebody in here can testify that I know him for myself. Is there a witness in the church this morning who says that you have a personal relationship with Jesus and you know him for yourself? Somebody talk to me. Y'all yeah, let me know. He says, oh no. No. He says, no, 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 no. I'm clear on who you are. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the one who's been sent to save me from my sins. 
He says, you are the one who's been sent to redeem me, to reclaim me, to bring me back into relationship with a holy God. Church family, in the times we live in right now, where we are surrounded by a whole lot of stuff, with a whole lot of folks saying a whole lot of things that don't add up or mean nothing, the one thing you need to know for yourself is who Jesus is. There's too much coming at us day by day. There's too much negativity. There's too much stuff on the news. Too much stuff on social media that can influence us. So I encourage you, you ought to get to know him for yourself. And maybe, maybe somebody in here today doesn't mind testifying that when I need him, I can call on Jesus. Yeah. Is anybody in the church this morning? You, you heard, you heard the choir singing songs all this morning about how good God is. And they kept on uplifting the name of Jesus. But listen, please don't get tired of hearing the name Jesus. Because it's at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord to the glory of the Father. Listen, please don't get tired of hearing the name Jesus because at the name of Jesus, demons still tremble when you say the name of Jesus. Please don't grow weary at the name of Jesus because healing still takes place when you call on the name of Jesus. Please don't get sick and tired of hearing the name Jesus because deliverance still happens when you call on the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Bunch of brothers. 
he begins a ministry that turns into a movement. Give it to you one more time. So I like, y'all make sure y'all shout. Can you give it to you one more time? Said so Jesus, one man takes twelve. Sometimes sorry ragtag jokes after dealing with them for three years he turns his ministry into a movement so much so that he started with 12 men that is now 2.4 billion people around this world
But much of what we, it's, it's not relayed, it's revealed. Much of which, what we learn about God is not relayed. You, you can hear me talk about all of this theological, biblical stuff all day long. You can take your notes, you can write it down, and it's information. It's not until it becomes applicable to your certain reality that it becomes revelation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All of the information that you get about God from Genesis and Matthew and Second Chronicles and Revelation, all of that information is good. It's necessary, but it's not until you get into certain predicaments of life that it becomes a revelation. Listen, there are some people in here who can testify. You heard about what the Lord could do. All right, you've been in church, but it wasn't until you needed the Lord to do what you needed the Lord to do that he revealed himself as the one you needed him to be. Oh, oh, I heard people say, I heard people say he, he's a hard fixer. He's my mind regulator. He, we can hear that all day long. And that's information until your heart gets broken. And you find him putting your heart back together. Again, that's Revelation. Yes, he's a heart fixer, and somebody knows good and well that your mind can get messed up. You you can be thinking crazy all the way to church until you get some revelatory word from God, and God begins to straighten out your mind, and you leave Him saying, "Oh yes, he's a mind regular." Anybody in here been sick? If I have been down and out and sick, and, and you heard other folk talk about, oh, he's a doctor in a sick room, but it wasn't until you got sick, and then you found out that he'll heal you everywhere you hurt. Is there any kind of witnesses in the building? Listen, listen, watch this, watch this. You got yourself into some trouble, and he snatched you out of the jaws of justice that challenged you that we're going to take you out and you found out, guess what? He's a lawyer in a courtroom. Somebody ought to thank God for revelation. He's revealed to me that he'll feed you when you're hungry. He's revealed to me that he's water when you're thirsty. He's revealed to me that he'll put money in your pocket when you didn't know how your bills was going to get paid off. I ain't telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you something that I know. He revealed it. I know something for myself. And so our responsibility should be to try and live so close to the Lord that every week we get another revelation of who he is. Listen, every week you are, it's every week in your life you ought to try to live so close to the Lord that he reveals another side of his nature to you. Listen, it don't matter how long you've been living. God is still revealing himself to you. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how long you've been saved. You ain't found out everything there is to know about God. If, if you've ever taken a diamond and you looked at it, and every time you turn that diamond, you see another faucet of its brilliance. Listen, may I please tell you that every year of your life, when you turn God in another direction, when you turn God towards you in a different direction, you see another faucet of his brilliance, another faucet of his excellence, another faucet of his majesty. Is there anybody in here who can testify? Listen, I'm still getting to know him, and I want to get to know him better for myself. The Bible said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his Pastor Paul says, Paul says, now, 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 you would think Paul already knows him. And he says, I want to know him better. He says, I want to know him better. As a matter of fact, our mothers, 
our mothers of the church, they, they season now. They, they, they've seen some things. They've been doing some things. And, and guess what? If they keep on listening to God, even them, they'll hear God reveal him, himself to them in a whole different way. They, they, they may be in a different season of their lives now. And they, they, they found out even in this season, watch this, that God is a keeper. Yes. They, they knew it back in the day. But now they know it on a whole different level. As a matter of fact, they've had some difficulties in their bodies. But every time they've had difficulties, the Lord allows them to bounce back. Praise the Lord. Because your God is a restorer. Your God is a way maker. God is a healer. And somebody ought to thank God that he keeps on revealing himself. He keeps on showing you great and mighty things. He keeps on talking to you late in the midnight hour. He keeps on telling you, my child, I got you in the palm of my head. He keeps on showing you hour after hour that he's a protector. He keeps on telling you don't worry about what the other folk may be saying. Focus and lean and depend on me. So he said, I'm going to say, as a matter of fact, you ought to shout out right now. Show me your glory, God. Show me your power. Show me your ability. Show me your matchlessness. Show me your majesty. Listen, I want to know God on a whole other level. He says, you're blessed to know who I am. He says, but if you stay close to me, he says, my father will reveal some stuff to you that you never saw coming. He says, he'll reveal some stuff that'll blow your mind. Lord, have mercy. Anybody ever experienced God blowing your mind? Anybody ever had a mind-blowing revelation? Listen, you was in some mess. You was at a point that you didn't know which way was up. You was at a point trying to figure out how am I going to make it. And then all of a sudden the Lord came. And when the Lord comes through, he'll have you saying stuff like, Lord, have mercy. It's amazing how great God is. And when he does it, this is a spiritual revelation. This is spiritual stuff. And I need some folk in here who still want to be spiritual to help me preach right there here because you know you, you've enjoyed carnality. You, you've enjoyed some of the fleshly things. You, you've enjoyed some of the world things. But, but I, I want somebody who still wants to be spiritual, who wants to be a little more spiritual to say, God, show me who you are. I, I need to be more like, oh, God, I'm real. Okay, okay, I got to go. I got to go. But can I give you one more thing? Because the scripture seems to suggest that if we're going to have a startup, if we're going to start something with a relationship with God or what we're trying to do in our lives, it teaches us that God can take these 12 raggedy, sometimey brothers, and because they know who he is, he can allow, he, he, he took their, that 12 folk and allowed their startup to blow up. Watch this. Because your Bible says that Jesus doesn't stop talking. He, he doesn't stop talking. That was verse 17. I just finished with. But, but when you get to verse 18, he says, and I say also. And I say also. Which means I ain't done blessing you yet. Boy, y'all miss your shout key right there. He says, can I please, can I just throw this alongside just to, he says, God is not through blessing you. He ain't through. I just, I just wanted to let y'all know that. I wanted to bless somebody's life with that one. God is not through. And just because you thought it was all over, just because you thought you were at the end of the road, just because you thought you didn't have anything or God didn't have anything left for you, listen, I just stopped by this morning and to tell you, God deputized me to tell everybody right here at the GB Church, God is not through blessing you. He 
saying through Luke, move from verse 17 to 18. He says, I got something else for you, man. Here, here's what I want you to know. I need you to understand that you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, now this is intriguing. Because we just found out in the preceding verses that his name was Simon, son of John. But now in verse 18, Jesus has decided to change his name. And he has no longer called him Simon, he calls him Peter. And it's interesting that he would call him that because Peter means rock, stone, something upon which you can build. And so when he says, listen, I'm going to change your name. Here's your new designation. You are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And here's the good news. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, that's not even a word. Little people, whoever's listening, don't, don't go to school and say good. Don't say that. Don't say that. The better news is the gates of hell will not prevail against it. All oh, glory to his high name. Here we move from personal proclamation to spiritual designation. And now I need you to hear a word about ecclesiastical determination. Ecclesiastical determination. Ecclesiastical. Big old word. Ecclesiastical determination. Ecclesiastical is the word for church. That's what it is. Actually, the Greek word is ecclesia. And that word is the word for church. Church. It allows us to have some picture of what the Lord has determined as his church. And he says, listen here, people. Because you know who I am. Because you've received revelation from God. He says, I'm going to show you. I'm going to use you to build my church. I'm going to use you. You use the fact that you have properly identified me to build my church. I'm going to use you to use what you have that you've used to identify me. That's going to be the foundation for what the church shall be built. He's not saying I'm going to build the church on Peter. That, that would be faltering. That would be failing. You already know Peter is sometimes. You already know Peter is on again off again. And if you read the four gospels, you'll find out that Peter is, is, is at a lofty place like in Matthew chapter 16. But on the night before Jesus was crucified, Peter was doing some of everything. Cussing. Cussing as much as a, a sailor could cuss. Just like some church folk. Well, if you ain't praise the Lord, there's somebody on your road who got another other issue. Amen. Amen. And, and so come on. Everybody in here got issues. It, it, everybody in here. Gotta say amen. Everybody got issues. Everybody in here know you still got progress to make. Say hallelujah. Everybody in here knows you're not perfect. Say, 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 say Jesus, work on me. Work on me, Lord. I need you. And, and this is the blessing. He chooses to use a sometime brother that ought to bless that. Oh, that ought to bless you right there. You, you should have been hollering all over this church because I wasn't just talking about Peter. He chooses to use this brother who still has issues. Chooses to use a brother who still uses foul language. But don't stop with Peter in the gospel. You got to read all the way through Acts of the Apostles because by the time we get to Pentecost Sunday, Lord have mercy, God is going to use Peter to build his church in such a way that when the Holy Ghost comes, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of him, he preaches one sermon and 3,000 souls got saved. Can I find about 12 people in here who can testify? Listen, don't judge me on my pre-Pentecostal area because I know I've had some time for the Lord to work on 
me. And when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of me, watch this. He's going to do some things in my life that I never even saw coming. He says, I'm going to use you, man. I'm going to use you to build my church. I'm going to use you to build my church. Why? Because you know who I am. That ought to bless you. That ought to bless you. Listen, you, you don't have to know all of the Old Testament to the New Testament to be used by the Lord. You, you, you don't have to know Chronicles from Corinthians to be used by the Lord. You don't need to know Hebrew in the Old Testament and Greek in the New Testament to be used by the Lord. You just need to know Jesus. And if you know Jesus, you know what he's done for you. You know the ways he's made for you. You know the doors he's opened. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He wants to use you. So I'm going to be able to use you to build my church. And this is an easy ecclesiastical determination. He says, I'm going to use you to make sure that by the time the gospel is preached, souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. People will be transformed. For the glory of God. Get ready to get out of here, but watch it. Watch the beginning. And let, let, let's, let's get it started. It's a ragtag bunch of 12 men. Sometime in, at best. On this day in Caesarea Philippi. Because Peter properly identifies who Jesus is. Peter was able to get a declaration from Jesus to determine that he was going to be used to build his church. And when you read all the way through the first part of the book of Acts, you find out that he keeps on using people to preach God's word, to impact the people's lives. And that blesses me because the last part of the text is that no matter who stands against you, they won't be able to conquer you. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matter of fact, is there anybody in here who can go ahead and get happy? That no matter how many foes you have that comes into your situation, they won't be able to overcome you because Jesus has given us victory in this responsibility. I need somebody in here who can thank God for getting it started because somebody knows that when God starts you on your way, yeah. he will make sure that you are successful. Yeah. If you lean and depend on God, yeah. he'll make sure that your work that you're doing for him yeah. will be victorious. Yeah. And if you keep on working for God, yeah. let me tell you that everything in your life is going to be all right. Well, what do you mean? I'm trying to tell you. Keep on trusting in God. Keep on leaning and depending on God. If you keep him at your word and you know who God is, you'll understand that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper because he wants to see you successful. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, he that begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of law have mercy. Sometimes we have to understand that the work we're doing for the Lord is a work that can go in a way that our blessings, they'll start to flow and they'll start to pour out over us. 
the start to lift us up, the start to put us in places that we didn't think we could get to. Why? Because when you have a relationship with, when you have somebody that you can call on late in the midnight hour, when you have somebody that you can tell them, I don't care how you feel about them. My relationship with God has brought me from a mighty long way. My relationship with God has kept me through the mud and miry clay. My relationship with God has kept me when I was around some sometime and folk. My relationship with God has kept me when I had to go to that old job that I don't like going to. My relationship with God has had to keep me when I had to talk to some folk I didn't feel like talking to. My relationship with God has kept me when I had to go see the doctor. And the doctor said, I've done all I can do. And you looked at him and said, that's your diagnosis. But let me tell you about somebody who I call on day and night, who hears me when I call him, who answers me time and time again. He will step right in on time. As a matter of fact, some of us, you may be saying, well, I ain't experienced him on that level. I ain't experienced him in that way. But look around the room, because somebody in here knows who God is. As a matter of fact, look at Sister Wallace. She's standing there. She's been through some stuff. But God is a keeper. Lord have mercy. Look at Sister Hayes sitting in the back. She's waving her hand because she knows who God is. And he's a keeper. And he's kept her. As a matter of fact, we can go a little older. Look at Mother McGinsey sitting in the back. Her hair may be great, but she's still moving, still calling on the name of the Lord. And because of her, you ought to let your faith go up a little bit and say, if he's able to keep Mother McGinsey, surely he's able to keep me too. Keep on living. Keep on trusting him. Keep taking him at his word. Because God so loved the world that he sent his son who gave his life that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Well, what do you mean, preacher? One Friday, he gave his life. He was beaten for you. He was bruised for you. But not only that Friday, Sunday morning, because he died for you. Early Sunday morning, he decided that I'm not going to stay here. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Power to heal you. Power to save you. Power to lift you up. I may have started in one place. I may have started with just a little. But when I kept on following, when I allowed him to be a lamp unto my feet, when I said, God, wherever you need, My startup changed into something a little different. I know, I know it's hard to start some things, but let me encourage you. If you haven't been totally dependent on God, start. Take Him at His word, because if you take 
take him at his word. He already told you. Because you know who I am. The gates of hell. And you can't tell me that every day that you wake up and your feet strike the ground. If you live in the same world that I'm living in, you know we are living in a rough time. Although you see tragedy after tragedy, although you see what others may be having to endure, there may be times you may have to endure it. But he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Let's we know that he's going to elevate me. He's going to see me through. He's going to continue to bless me time and time again. Get started. Get to know him. Get to trust him. Even you may think, oh, I know everything there is to know about the Lord. No, you don't. My relationship started with him. Yeah. Now is your we extend this privilege to you right now. In the name of Jesus. Listen, little silver song says, You've been waiting yeah. for a blessing. And it seems it just won't come. Some people have had them doing this. Your body aches. Crack with pain. Seems all hope is gone. But listen to this. Blessing you. 
Pastor Wright for allowing me to speak at this time. I just want to remind everyone that the black box that's at the end that is reserved for a love offering for our pastor. Amen. If you feel uh, God leads you to bless our pastor, that box is there for that. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Ushers within your hands. Thank you. 
inspire us on today. God, we thank you that you gave us a mindset that if we've given up, then we can start again. If we haven't started, we can get started in our walk and our journey with you. God, we pray that you would take us as we leave this place. Watch over us like only you can. Father, I pray a special blessing over everyone that's in this place that may be watching online, God, that you will allow your anointing, your power to fall fresh in their homes, in their minds, or their family. But then, God, if there is a certain desire, a certain need, Father, that may not have been met through what we've done on today. God, we're thankful that you know all and that you see all. But God, we pray that you would bless them just the same. Keep us as our prayer until we meet again. Right now, we pray. Amen. Amen.